Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at the differentiation, the second derivative. Okay, so we can have a function and a curve like this in a graph, and that is given by y equals f of x. The original function, this function, gives us the equation for the y coordinate. We can then differentiate that, and the derivative, the first derivative, tells you the gradient of the curve at any point. It tells you how fast it's increasing or how fast it's decreasing. Finally, we can differentiate again, and this gives us the second derivative. This tells you how fast the gradient is increasing or decreasing. And you can think of this as the gradient of the gradient. And this is really useful for understanding the shape of the curve. So, uh, curves can have either different shapes. They can look like this. And look at the gradient here. The gradient is going from a gradient of 5 to a gradient of 2 to a gradient of 0, minus 2, then minus 5. The gradient is gradually going down. It's going from a big number to 0 to a small negative number. And this means that the gradient is decreasing, and therefore the gradient of the gradient is negative. The second derivative will be negative because the gradient is decreasing. We call this concave down, where the curve is bending downwards. Or we can have a curve like this, where the gradient starts going downwards, a gradient of minus 5, then minus 2, then 0, then 2, then 5, and it gradually bends upwards. Here the gradient is increasing. It's going from negative to 0 to positive. And the second derivative will be positive. And this is called concave up. Notice the symbol we use for the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared. The squared is in the middle at the top, but it's on the end at the bottom. It's a bit of a weird symbol, but that's how mathematicians write it. And so we can have concave down, where the curve is bending downwards, or concave up, where the curve is bending upwards. Notice that when it's concave down, if there's a turning point, it will be a maximum, whereas if it's concave up, the turning point will be a minimum. Look at those two coordinates that I've pointed out with those x's there. Uh, they are maximums or minimums. It's a maximum if it's concave down. It's a minimum if it's concave up. That's a key fact that will help you answer exam questions. Example 1. Consider the function y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3. Find the turning point of this function. Find the second derivative and find the nature of the turning points. Okay, let's start by finding the turning points. And for this, at a turning point, the gradient is equal to zero. So we will differentiate it to find the gradient and then make that equal to zero. We differentiate it and we make it equal to zero. We need to solve this equation now. 3 squared minus 12x equals zero. We do that by factorizing out an x and solving when x is equal to zero. Either x is equal to 0 or x equals 4. We solve that by factorising. The turning points are at those x coordinates. Now to find the y coordinates, we substitute x equals 0 or y x equals 4 into this equation, like this. And that gives us a y coordinate of 3, so the coordinate is 0, 3. Or we can substitute x equals 4 in, and we get this. And we get. 0, 3, or 4 minus 29 are the turning points. We have found the turning points of this function. Now we need to find a second derivative, so we differentiated it once already. Now we need to differentiate it again. And we get 6x minus 12. The original function told us the y coordinate. The first derivative told us the gradient. The second derivative is going to tell us the gradient of the gradient, the concavity of the function, or the shape of the function. Okay, so the second derivative we have found, and now we're on to part C. Find the nature of the turning points. Okay, so I'm going to consider the first turning point first, and then the second turning point after. We'll substitute the x coordinate in to the second derivative, and this gives us a second derivative of minus 12 at this point. Minus 12 means it is uh, concave down, so this will be considered a maximum. So because it is negative, it is concave down, and 
concave down shapes give us a maximum turning point. The Kiwan at 0, 3 will be a maximum. Now 4 minus 29, we're going to substitute x equals 4 into that. And we get a second derivative of, minus, of positive 12. Hence the curve is concave up at this turning point and it is a minimum. I've got a picture of this graph here that I've uh, used Desmos to find. And we have it concave down at 0, 3 and concave up at 4 minus 29. And it is indeed a minimum and a maximum. So it's useful to look at that picture to see what the curve actually looks like. And that's the answer. Now let's look at example 2. Look at the graph in the diagram. The points A, B and C and D lie on this curve. Complete the table of values for f dash of x to indicate whether it's positive, negative or zero. And then complete the table for f dash dash of x to show what the second derivative is, whether it's positive, negative or zero. So at point A, the gradient is going down. So the gradient will be negative. It's also curving upwards. So the curvature of the curve is curving upwards. It is concave up here. So the first derivative, the gradient will be negative. It's going down. The second derivative, while it's curving upwards, it's going to be positive. The uh, concavity will be concave up. The second derivative will be positive. Now at point B, this is a turning point. The gradient is zero. Uh, and so the gradient at B will be zero. But the concavity, well, it changed from being concave up to being concave down. So there's a change in the concavity of the function here. It's change from being concave up to concave down. When there's a change in concavity, we call that a, a point of inflection. Uh, so the second derivative will be zero because the second derivative has gone from being positive concave up to negative concave down. The second derivative will be zero at points of inflection. Finally, point C, here the gradient is negative and it's also curving down. So uh, the gradient is negative and the concavity is also negative. Finally, at point D, this is another turning point. And so the gradient will be zero, but it's also concave up. The curve is curving up. Uh, so the concavity will be positive, like that. Thank you for watching this video from Advanced Maths. Uh, we have now got some practice questions for you to try. So consider this one, uh, x to the power 4 plus 3, x to the power 3. And to find the uh, coincidence of the turning points of the function and describe their nature. Test their nature by using the second derivative test. Pause the video now and try this yourself. When you're ready, I'll reveal the answers in 3, 2, 1. How did you do? Did you get the answers correct? Let me know how well you did in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps in your exams. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this useful. We have more useful resources at advancedmaths.com to help you master your exams. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.